the best double majors for liberal arts degrees. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we get into that, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, college degrees, careers, and opportunities that are going to lead you to success. And we also go over how you can avoid some of the common traps that so many people fall for. If that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out. Now, with that being said, this is a very highly requested topic. Everybody wants me to go over over the double majors that are good. And instead of answering each individual one, I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and make a series about it. But let's jump right into it. The first one on the list is going to be a liberal arts degree and a math degree. So I think one combination that might be good here would be philosophy and statistics. With a philosophy degree, you would expect to make $48,000 a year starting out and 89,000 in mid-career pay. And with statistics, you'd make 63,000 starting out and 114,000 mid-career. Now there's a ton of different career paths that you could go down with this combination. One career path you see math degree graduates go down quite a bit because there's just so much opportunity there is software development. There you would be making $107,000 a year. There's 1.4 million jobs available and it's growing at a ridiculous 22%. Your background in mathematics would help you quite a bit when it comes to the computer science side of things. And then the fact that you studied philosophy and you understand logic really well would also help you. Now liberal arts degrees do have quite a few downsides, but one of the things that's really good about it is it's not likely to be automated. Same goes for math related degrees as well. So something like software engineering, for instance, only has about a 4% chance of being automated according to willrobotstakemyjob.com. Another one you might consider looking into would be a liberal arts degree plus a business degree. Something like economics mixed with general business. With an economics degree, you would expect to make $58,000 a year starting out and 109,000 in mid-career pay. And with a general business degree, you'd make $47,000 a year starting out and 83 $3,000 mid-career. One career path you might go down is becoming a financial manager. They would make around $129,000 a year. There's 697,000 jobs available and it's growing at 15%, which is really good. Now there's a lot of really good things about business related degrees. First of all, they're extremely flexible and so they go really well when it comes to double majoring with other types of degrees. Think about it, pretty much every company and every industry and a ton of different career types out there are gonna be hiring people that have business degrees. So it pretty much doesn't matter what type of degree you pair it with, you're probably gonna make yourself look a little better when it comes to double majoring. Now, another thing that's really great about business degrees is when I did the video on the degrees that create the most millionaires, business degrees were all over the list. I believe they made six out of the top 10. Now, don't get me wrong, business degrees do tend to lead to careers where you do have a pretty good salary, but I don't think that's the main reason. I think the two main reasons here are, for one, when you do business-related degrees, you're probably going to learn some of the basics of personal personal finance at a very young age. Things like budgeting, saving, and investing are going to be things you're gonna learn pretty young, and I've talked about this before, but if you start investing about $15 a day, when you're 18 years old, you will easily retire as a multimillionaire. And then on top of that, I can't prove this, I think that people who get business degrees tend to go on to start businesses more often than others. And if you start a successful business, you're likely going to make quite a bit more money than someone who has a normal nine to five job. Next on the list is going to be liberal arts degrees plus engineering degrees. So an example of this one might be urban planning plus civil engineering. With urban planning, you'd start off making around $48,000 a year and 88,000 in mid-career pay. With civil engineering, you'd start off making $61,000 a year and $103,000 mid-career. If you became an urban and regional planner, you'd make $74,000 a year. There's 39,000 jobs available and it's growing at 11%, which is faster than average. Now, I'm going to be honest with you here. Generally speaking, this isn't going to be true for everyone. I know everyone's a little bit different, but generally speaking, engineering degrees are some of the hardest out there and liberal arts degrees are probably not going to be nearly as hard. So usually when it comes to engineering degrees, it's going to be very hard for you to double major in anything else. In fact, a lot of people are going to have trouble doing an engineering degree in four years. So when it comes to double majoring, liberal arts would be one of the few other types of degrees where it would be realistic for normal people. With that being said, it's still going to be extremely difficult. I don't think that I would have been ready to do an engineering degree at 18. I pretty much wanted to just have fun in college, especially earlier on. So you pretty much just have to be honest with yourself and realize what your limits are. Now, that being said, engineering degrees in general tend to earn more throughout an entire lifetime than any other type of degree. The average degree earns around $2.4 million in a lifetime, whereas an engineering degree will earn $3.5 million. And this is pretty much across the board and it doesn't really matter what career path you go down. For instance, if you go into arts and media, you're still gonna be earning on average about $3 million over a lifetime. And if you go 
into community service and legal, you're gonna be earning 3.2 million. So engineering degrees tend to do extremely well pretty much no matter what career path you decide to go down. And mixing the extremely practical, hard skills that you learn with an engineering degree with some of the softer skills that you might learn with a liberal arts degree might be an incredible combination. With that being said, you really do have to do your research. You don't wanna waste your time taking a bunch of extra classes if you don't actually need to. Next on the list, we're gonna be talking about liberal arts degrees and technology degrees. Now technology degrees and just technology skills in general are extremely hot right now. I talk about this quite a bit on the channel. So for instance, you might mix a criminal justice degree with an information systems degree. With criminal justice, you'd make $40,000 a year starting out and 66,000 in mid-career pay. And with information systems, you'd make 59,000 starting out and 101,000 mid-career. I think technology is affecting every single industry out there, whether it's totally disrupting the industry or whether it's just streamlining things. So learning technology related skills can help you pretty much no matter what direction you decide to go. So let's say you decided to be a CSI detective type person and you wanted to become a computer systems analyst. They make around $90,000 a year. There's 632,000 jobs available and it's growing at 7%, which is faster than average. Then you could end up being one of those awesome nerds on CSI or criminal minds that starts looking stuff up when they're trying to find the bad guy. Another thing that's great about technology related careers is that it's not very likely that they're going to be automated. So for instance, computer system analyst has only a 0.7% chance of being automated. Next on the list, we're going to be talking about a liberal arts degree plus another liberal arts degree. So one example here, of course, would be political science plus economics. With a poli sci degree, you would expect to make $47,000 a year starting out and $89,000 in mid-career pay. And with an economics degree, you'd make $58,000 starting out and $109,000 mid-career. Now, one career path you might go down is becoming a political scientist, and they make around $122,000 a year. There's 7,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 6%, which is faster than average. However, you're probably going to have to get a master's degree. And this is a common problem that you see over and over again when it comes to a lot of the liberal arts degrees. It's very difficult to get a job, especially if you're actually trying to get a job in the subject that you studied in college with just a bachelor's degree. A lot of the time you're gonna have to go back and get a master's degree, and sometimes that's not even good enough. You're gonna have to go back again and get a doctorate. I was looking at philosophy degrees, and I believe 57% of philosophy graduates end up going back to school in order to get a master's or a doctorate. Now, a lot of these types of degrees aren't gonna be as hard as some something like engineering or mathematics, so it's kind of what you make of it. If you wanna kinda of just coast by and just do the bare minimum, you can probably do that and still graduate, but it's probably not the best idea to do that. You wanna make sure that you're engaged and you're actually learning valuable skills. And like I said, there's a lot of downsides to getting a liberal arts degree. I talk about that quite a bit on my channel. And again, I'm not biased here or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you guys the honest facts and you can you know, do what you want with that information. However, there are some upsides to getting one of these types of degrees, and I I think one of the biggest ones is that it's going to teach you quite a bit of soft skills. Soft skills is going to involve things like critical thinking, formulating an argument, writing essays, uh, communication, giving speeches, thinking on your feet, things like that. Now soft skills might not directly lead to you making money, you know, companies probably aren't going to pay you if you have a lot of these types of degrees. However, they might indirectly lead you to making more money because of the fact that you're going to have great communication skills. And on top of that, they're probably just going to enrich your life in general. And the next one on the list that we're going to talk about is a liberal arts degree plus any other type of degree that's a little more practical. So for instance, you might get a history degree. History is one of my favorite subjects, and you might combine that with a computer science degree. With history, you'd expect to make $45,000 a year starting out and $80,000 in mid-career pay. And with a CS degree, you'd make $70,000 starting out and $116,000 in mid-career pay. Now, when it comes to the most and least regretted degrees, according to ZipRecruiter, computer science is the least regretted. Only about 12% of the people who got this degree regretted it, and the main reason for regret was that it's pretty stressful. On the other hand, social sciences were the fourth most regretted type of degree at about 29% of people regretting it. And the main reasons are that they're a little bit too general, impractical, and it's hard to find a job without further studies. So when it comes to these types of degrees, these liberal arts degrees, I agree with a lot of people that I think they're very interesting. And I also think that they have a lot of value. I'm not saying that they don't have value. But in this modern age where the average person is going 
owing almost $40,000 in debt in order to get a college degree, you want to make sure that you're able to secure a job after graduating. And unfortunately, there's a huge supply and demand issue when it comes to liberal arts degrees. There's quite a few people who are graduating with them and there's not that much demand on the market. And that brings me to my next point, which is maybe you should consider not majoring in liberal arts. Instead, you could either minor in it, take extra classes in it, or just study it on the side. And the truth is, is if you're just in it for the knowledge, there are free classes online. For instance, Harvard and a bunch of the other Ivy League schools offer completely free classes online and you can even buy the same textbooks that they used. So for instance, film is something that I really enjoy and because of that, I took a couple extra classes. History is another subject I really enjoy and because of that, I listen to podcasts, I read books, and I also read blogs online. I remember that when I took a history class, they were making me go over subjects that I wasn't really all that interested in and they were also making me memorize dates and do all kinds of stuff and write essays about stuff that I didn't really want to do. And that kind of ruined the subject for me a little bit and so I kind of decided that I wanted to keep it as a hobby. Now, if you do decide that, you know, hey, I want to do history as my career, more power to you. I think that's awesome. But I do think that you should be a little more practical about it. You'll likely have to either start a YouTube channel, maybe a blog or a podcast, something along those lines if you want to do it professionally and get paid for it. Because the truth is there's not going to be that many jobs out there for someone who just has a bachelor's in history. Now I've been working on this really exciting project where I've taken all of the knowledge that I've learned and I put together all of the best sources that I have found on the internet into one college degree ranker. And right now it's in version 1.1 and I'm only going to allow it to be out there for just a few months. It's going to be down in the description below in my Patreon if you want to access it. Again, it's probably not going to be out there for long. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead and gently tap the like button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Share the video with all of your friends. And before you leave, go ahead and check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.